I'm your friend David Cameo, and we are Squawking Dead, a podcast polarizing episodes beyond the Walking Dead universe. Sometimes we give you news, sometimes we make you laugh, but most times we go deep, and today, our special treat for you is Fear the Walking Dead's top five favorite characters, as brought to you by Sharony, aka Blazy Gardner, Cosmom09, Rachel Burt, and Bridget, ko-fi.com slash punkybrewster, that's P-U-N-K-Y-B-R-U-I-S-E-T-E-R. As you just saw, hopefully, I just showed you the ad for our ongoing Fear the Walking Dead final season countdown giveaway. We've been doing this for a while now. We're up to question six. Every day you answer a question creatively, well, every other day technically, you will receive an entry towards the prizes that I mentioned, a $50 gift certificate to TWDUshop.com and a thank you to Fear the Walking Dead tribute t-shirt designed by Thomas O'Mara, aka Celtic TSO, which contains the silhouette of John Dory with all the characters that have ever appeared on Fear the Walking Dead in the background. Question 7 will be available on Ko-fi and Patreon tomorrow at some point, as well as publicly available via all social media, including our YouTube channel, the day after. So that would be Thursday. So (laughs) that is the last entry now again. So you have tomorrow as an entry, day after as an entry. If you haven't done it already, answer creatively. People have been sending photo edits, paintings, haikus. Yeah. It's a thing. People have been going out and showing us things correlating to their answer for Fear the Walking Dead, favorite location, some really creative answers. So I really, really appreciate. Oh, uh, one more little bit of housekeeping. Aside from all the ways you can support us, like Phineas Coffee and buying us a coffee during the stream, which will show up in the chat forever in this video, you can also obviously join a membership tier on either Kofi or Patreon for just a dollar a month if you want to start there. But as of tomorrow, there will be a sale in our merch store, which will be six. $16 t-shirts, as well as up to 35% off the rest of the store. You can get to it via the description in the YouTube and Facebook videos, the merch store. There's a link there. Or you can just go to squawkingdead.com, click the main menu on the top left, and choose merch tomorrow, Wednesday, May 10th, until I think it's like a week, maybe three days. I don't know. You'll find out when you head to our merch store. Without further ado, thank you all for your creative input throughout this giveaway. It's made for really, really good videos. I, I very much enjoy making them. My only regret is that I have to watch these videos in advance of premiering them you know, while I create my compilation videos the next day containing your answers. I wish I could react to them live before because I, I want to make sure they come out okay. It's been such a joy and a pleasure to see you step up to the plate and be creative. I didn't have high hopes, I'll admit. After the first question dropped and we left the text box open, people were just writing their answers very dull and uncreatively. No offense. Actually, it's probably a little offensive. I'm sorry. Not sorry. But then once we got rid of that text box, you guys showed up. So without further ado, here are not only Bridget, Sharon D, and Rachel's top five favorite characters on Fear the Walking Dead, but your top five favorite characters on Fear the Walking Dead. As uh, Sharon D, Rachel, and Bridget reached out to some of you to get your input on what your top five favorite characters of Fear of the Walking Dead are. So take it away, ladies, right about now. Our topic today is the top five favorite Fear the Walking Dead characters. This is all seasons, by the way. This is not just four through eight. My number five is Ophelia. I, oh, that surprises me. Okay. I absolutely loved Ophelia and I wish that she would have survived for longer. I loved the character. I loved her relationship with Daniel, obviously. I really wish that character would have lasted a lot longer. I only watched season one of the first three seasons so <laughs> i did see yeah. a whole lot of her but i did i did like what i did see of her she gets really cool in season three actually that's what she I has did. some really good character yeah. development mm-hmm. maybe someday i will get around to watching season three, <laughs> three, <but I've> been, <laughs> and that was even with rachel's help with me watching it i was just we we made it to episode six and i was like you know what i just don't mm-hmm. want to watch this anymore <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually a little sad that I couldn't put this person higher, but when I really sat down to look at these, I struggled with where I was putting people. My number one was obvious, but the rest, I really struggled with the rest. Yeah, it was tough. So my number five is Taka. Oh, okay. 
I know that Charity does not care for the earlier season. <laughs> and you and I went and both picked the characters for the first three. <laughs> but I will say, probably one of my favorite seasons is season three because of the conflict with Taka and the natives. Mm. That storyline is just really cool. I thought it was cool to see preppers because we hadn't really touched that in The Walking Dead proper. If this were to happen in our world now, there are people like this out there. And me kind of being on that, wanting to be on that fringe of weirdness, like, yeah, I want to prep. I really enjoyed that whole season. Taka was the best part of the whole season. He's such a great character and such a great actor playing him. It, it's just a good story. He's very popular in our group chat. Well, and he was left open-ended. So you don't know what happened to him. So you're kind of left with that. Well, he, he went, was tough. Maybe he he's still to around. Montana. Where is he? He went to Montana to be a shepherd. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> my number five was Althea. I did struggle with this. And she actually probably would have been higher on my list. Except after her run in with Isabel in season five, she got so mopey and and mm -hmm. depressed all the time and what i loved about al in season four in the beginning of season five was she was funny and plucky and you know i've got layers i'm an onion and after isabel she was just like me isabel we she got to see we got to see the flash of that again in in six in season, in season mm -hmm. well in season seven too she gets ready to leave to find isabel yeah. and she whenever she blows up the walker with the yes yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah yeah we saw a little bit of that but for most of season five and the little bit we saw her in six it was like uh, uh, mopey yeah. out but i did i did love althea especially in season four so the people that responded aj at aj graham 19 madison is his number five tom at celtic tso on instagram said luciana brian picked taco walker yeah, yeah. <laughs> lolly he said ophelia Carranza said Strand. Nick said June. And Finn said June. Mitchell said Travis. And Donnie said Luciana. And Jess said Alicia. As we go, believe me, there's some you're going to be like, what? <laughs> 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 Number four, favorite character, Annie. Aww. Oh. Even though Annie's a kid and maybe she didn't always make the best decisions, she did what she absolutely thought was best for these kids. She was a child put into a parental role. And I think she did the best that she possibly could for being a kid. I think the character was written very strong and really nailed it. I just love Annie. Yeah, we miss her. Wish we knew what in the world happened. I guess it was her destiny to be killed by nuclear emissions. That's why they made them leave where they were. Mm -hmm. And they took her yeah. straight through a nuclear explosion. So good yeah. job, Morgan. <laughs> Way to go. Way to go, Morgan. <laughs> Saved them from one nuclear explosion just to right. drop them right into another one. <laughs> Went from Chernobyl straight to Three Mile Island. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My number four is Alicia. Actually, when I sat down and looked at this list, I was surprised how many people were season one people. <laughs> this is shocking to me. <laughs> I really enjoyed Alicia. Her character development was great. Subtract seven, because what in the F was happening there? But <laughs> if I look at her character arc from the beginning, even her initial introduction, I loved. She was the steadfast child. She had to deal with the fact that her brother was an absolute fucking disaster. She was there for her family, even though... She didn't want to be. She was so reluctant in her ability to lead. There's something you can really connect to there. I loved her relationship with her boyfriend. I thought it was so sweet. Mm -hmm. And that was such a heartbreaking thing for her to go through. But it was so good to get that part of her character going. She was going to have to deal with trauma and suffering. And I kind of wish she would have struck out on her own and stayed out on her own. We got it for two episodes. Yeah. And then she immediately came back. <laughs> so there's clearly some weird codependency issues <laughs> happening there <laughs> between her and her mother. Plus, I liked seeing her growth in season three when they're on the ranch. And then after Madison was gone, we got some weird stuff. But mm -hmm. grief, grief is weird. And it does weird things to you and it can take a while to get through it. But I love seeing her break through that. And she was such a badass. Too. That was one of the best episodes of the show came out of that, though. And that's Close Your Eyes with her and Charlie, which my number four is Charlie. <laughs> She's a good kid. She's smart. 
trying to do the right thing. And she got so much hate over Nick, all the backlash I kind of sided with Charlie because she's just a kid. She just watched the person who was taking care of her get murdered, even if it was by somebody she knew. She continued to grow throughout the series. Charlie is Mm -hmm. a smart, useful person to them. She sneaks in when they uh, are trying to get into Daniel's compound. She's like a little stealth ninja. I really love Charlie. And I'm, I was very upset that they went the route they did with her. And I'm really upset at the age thing with her. I was listening to our coverage of Morning Cloak earlier, looking for mm-hmm. clips. And we were talking about why they made her fucking 13. It was so cringy and gross that she was it only was. 13. It was really cringy. Yeah. One more year, make her 14. That would have been way more acceptable than, than 13. A um, little less cringy. They were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> AJ was Morgan. Tom was Alicia. Oh. <laughs> so me, and, me and Tom. Okay. <laughs> Brian said Nick. Lolly also said Nick. Carranza said Al. Nick Sanchez Arcos said Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell said Strand. Finn said John. Donnie said Charlie also. And Jess said Charlie. So Charlie was very popular at number four. Okay, so this is the one I cheated on, and I'm just going to say for number three, the Clark children. (laughs) You ass. (laughs) Nick didn't Uh, even make my list. So Nick and And I I honestly, I honestly couldn't decide. I think I truly love Nick and and Alicia equal for varying reasons. I don't even know if I could put into words all the different reasons, but he pissed me off in the beginning. He was going through his own shit. As the world was ending, he was detoxing and he kept making these bad decisions, but I felt like it was a good real life representation of what somebody might be going through, but also overcoming it. But Alicia on the flip side, I think she had every reason to really despise her brother because of how much attention he got and he was the favorite or whatever, but she really didn't let it get to her all that much. If anything, she took that treatment from a parent and said, you know what? I can take care of myself. And she really became a fucking badass because of it. And maybe her upbringing with this type of brother been different. She wouldn't have been prepared for everything we saw her do later on. Looking out for herself at a younger age prepared her for what she had to do in the future apocalypse. And she went through her moment where she did irritate me a little bit when she felt she had to be the one to kill everything and do everything. Girl, sit down, let people help you out. No, it has to be me. And I'm, but does it though? It really doesn't. I really wish Nick would have lasted a little longer. So to continue number- on this early season <laughs> <laughs> train we got going here, my number three is Strand. Well, he's still around though. I know, but there's just something about that man. <laughs> he's definitely a unique if it character. wasn't coleman domingo mm-hmm. i don't know that i would love him as much as i do there is just something about the energy that he adds to the character it's over the top and so beautiful i just love it i just I don't think love anyone it. else love could him. do it i loved strand because he was such a complicated character mm-hmm. now parts of that make him really simple but i loved the fact that he was a con man and <laughs> ended up falling in love with somebody tried to con and then there was the complicated relationship between him and the woman who helped raise his boyfriend peter Peter? abigail thank you the woman that they go to meet in mexico when they go down there to stay i loved this is a totally off topic but i loved the use of spanish language in the first couple of seasons also Mm -hmm. he had a weird an unusual past that I also enjoyed. He was cut out for this. He was living in the world of his dreams <laughs> by, by everything falling apart. Often I end up loving those characters the most when I look at The Walking Dead proper. Daryl and Carol are my favorite and it's because the end of the world allowed them to become the people that they were the whole time. They just couldn't be because of the way that society is. And we see that same thing with Strand. Now, does that make him an a-hole 90% of the time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but <laughs> that laugh. I was insert, just going to say Insert laugh. the laugh gif here. <laughs> Strand? <laughs> it's so <laughs> over the top. <laughs> I just love it. And the whole phone and his little hat. I just <laughs> thought the phone. The phone was season so over seven the top. Strand is prime strand. I just he was the best part of season seven. He really for was. real. 
he for is real, my... RuPaul took over season seven and directed. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild. The delivery of the lines, Coleman really shines through <laughs> during season seven. And I think that's why I like it so much. Who doesn't want to do that kind of role where you're just allowed to cut loose and be this character? And... I love when someone can really chew the scenery. Yeah. <laughs> and and man, does he ever. Yeah. My number three is Sarah. And it's because mm. she's so fucking funny. We needed the levity. Of course, I love Mo too. <laughs> I wish they would have expanded on her more. I feel like there's a lot more background we could have gotten mm-hmm. on her and Wendell. I but... loved Breathe With Me. Yes, that, that, is, was... Mm-hmm. that was one of the best episodes of that. Well, I mean, it wasn't hard to be the best episode of that season, but <laughs> she was one of the people I had a really hard time with. I almost wish we had done top five early seasons, top five later seasons. <laughs> <laughs> because after the reboot, she is one of my favorite people. They introduce her as the bad guy because she's kidnapping Jimbo and force him to make beer and she's kidnapped Morgan. It was all an act. They're really out there trying to help people. And, and of course, the Sarahisms. How can you not love the Sarahisms? Shit in a sandbox. <laughs> Stir up some beef. <laughs> Another very unique character. I, I don't recall seeing anybody else like her on television anywhere it's rare that you get the representation of a female truck driver she's like a really toned down teeter yes (laughs) (laughs) that's yellowstone if you don't know (laughs) teeter's one of my favorite characters on yellowstone i guess because she's like sarah aj said victor tom said grace brian said victor Lolly said travis carranza said dwight interesting addition Hmm. Nick Sanchez Arcos says Dory, John Dory. Mitchell says John. Damn. Finn. I'm going to cheat Daniel. again. <laughs> you watched. <laughs> no. No. Donnie says Nick. <laughs> and Jess also says Daniel. So a lot of Daniels and a couple more strands. Bridget said I can't cheat again, <laughs> even though I really want to. You're not allowed to say the Dorys. <laughs> You can't. Exactly. You, can't, you can't just cover all of them. No. That's exactly what I was going to say. I knew it. Right, no, I knew for it. Real. That's, yeah. I was going to go with the Dories, but I'll go with my original answer and just say June. June's my number two. Do you really need an explanation? How is she not on everyone's list? <laughs> I'm so sorry to say she's not on my list. Uh, Boo! See, you need a top eight. But I have to, we have to talk about that. To be fair, this is why I need like a top eight because Daniel should really be on my list and he's not. What are you going to do when we do the Walking Dead top five characters? Are we going to have to do the top 20 Walking Dead characters? (laughs) How many people are on the cast? (laughs) No, if I'm being honest, a top five Walking Dead would be much easier for me. It's not for me, so we're reversed. <laughs> June, for reasons that will are obvious. Are obvious. So my number two is John Dory Jr. As far as I'm concerned, the only John Dory. Ooh. I'm just kidding. Ooh. I love Senior. I, mean... I love Senior, but why? <laughs> just We talked about this in an episode of Squawking Dead. Senior's storyline was actually supposed to be John. But when mm. Garrett said he wanted to leave... They had to pivot. They had to fill that storyline in with yeah. somebody. I loved John Dory instantly. Garrett was on Raising Hope, and I loved Raising mm-hmm. Hope so much. And so seeing him in the show, I was like, holy shit, I know that guy. <laughs> and I love that guy. <laughs> But then on top of that, his character was just so likable. What a perfect character and what perfect casting. He's a simple kind of man, but he's not simple in the way that people in the South use it. He is simplistic in how he views things and how his life was at the beginning when we first meet him. And I love that they added in the element of, of course, they're in Texas. Why isn't there someone who can do trick shooting? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you for putting in an interesting niche characteristic that w- would be represented in Texas. John is my number two. Also, the first episode I ever watched of any Walking Dead anything was Laura, mm. and I saw him come on the screen. Holy shit! He was on Raising Hope, <laughs> and immediately had my attention. I didn't know his name at the time. I just recognized him immediately. It's the man you want. Everybody fucking wants yeah. to be June, don't you? Don't you want yeah. to be fucking June? <laughs> when he finds her in the, in the river <laughs> and he carries her in 
and he lays her down and he's like i'm gonna have to look is that okay asking her permission such a gentleman even then yeah. being the gentleman and everything i, I was listening that's I rare now i think it was the early squawking dead podcast and they thought he was a serial killer because he was so perfect that I sounds like something that. i would say <laughs> i just i just loved them being able to let someone be genuinely kind mm -hmm. because that is a rarity in our own lives mm -hmm. it's not often that you meet someone who is unselfishly motivated genuinely kind and generous and that is so special and you feel so special knowing them and it's a privilege to know them and so that's kind of how it felt with this character and was following true love get out of here that doesn't favorite. happen in real life in the beginning when he opens up the gun case and he's cleaning the guns it's him it's so quiet and mm -hmm. steady and then he sees the walker and instead of using the gun he picks up the axe it goes out and kills the walker that tells you immediately who john is he said he was very simplistic in how he viewed things but we find out as we go on how much more complicated he really is mm -hmm. he's not just a simple guy which ends up being his demise his complicated inner self yay what a bummer to go out on <laughs> <laughs> good thing we still have a number one aj said nick tom said john brian said madison Carranza brian said, said brian put madison at number two yeah, because <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. Saying, I know who his number one is. I know. Yeah, I know, yeah. know it. Of course. Lolly said Walker. Carranza said Sarah. Nick said Daniel. Mitchell said Madison. Finn said Teddy. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> his mother, his number one. Then no, his number one is even more interesting. <laughs> it's Riley. Johnny <laughs> says Alicia. And Jess says June. I'm just going to say that number one and number two, a lot of people have John and June. Mm, I'm sure. Down to number one, Rachel. I Sarah. Knew it <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I was Sarah. wondering who your number one was going to be. I already knew it. I knew it. Sharon, you kind of explained it best when she explained why she was number two. Sarah's my number one for all those same reasons. She brought this lightness to the show that we needed even though she had this humorous side to her was extremely complicated, which we saw a lot of in Breathe With Me. That was definitely one of my favorite Fear episodes, hands down. I think it showed incredible character growth for this character that I already really loved. It explained a lot about her relationship with Wendell too, which I think everybody was kind of curious about. How did they get to the point yeah. they, they were at? Yeah, I think it was even more I just realized than, that we had than another, we even thought. I just realized we had another set of twins that didn't fit together in that way. And that was Hope and Iris. That's something we yep. never even talked about on the show that we had. Yeah, their stories are very similar. And, similar. Yeah. It's so sweet to hear it and to know that things like that do happen in mm -hmm. the real world. They're, they're few and far between, but you as these... infants, they couldn't be apart. They battered yeah. each other. It's yeah. so sweet. I know they didn't exactly choose. Well, I guess they kind of did choose to be family, even as babies. And that is very much what we do with our Walking Dead family. And this is the family that we chose to be a part of. It's kind of represented in these characters. And Sarah's just fucking hilarious out of all the characters on Fear anyway. I can relate to her too, because she's a quote unquote girly kind of tomboyish buddy. Right. So but, I, I definitely Mo related. Um, Mo even the said that she chose the pink to show that Sarah yeah. had a feminine side too, because right. all you see her in is the overalls and See, and you guys usually see me in t-shirt and hoodies and jammies and stuff, but when I doll up, I go all out. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have a girly side. That's right. We, we I have a girly side. side. <laughs> it was a toss up between her and John for me because I put her third, mm -hmm. but that's only because of mm -hmm. John. Otherwise, she would have been number two. My number one is Daniel. I rightfully love so that man so much see this is what i really struggled with though because and i'll talk about this beca now because i did not put june on my list and i didn't put sarah on my list and i do love both of those characters sarah for all of the reasons we just discussed and and the beautiful episode that we got to see breathe with me put her over the top and really let mo collins shine as an actress which we just don't ever get to see it's so unfortunate but mm -hmm. she is so talented and yes she's hilarious so that's what you see all the time is the funniness but to get to see her play something serious was so touching i love june and i love jenna so much but this was a really hard list to put together i really had to think about this why oh, we need a top eight <laughs> it's just, it was tough because 
while I love June, I haven't always loved her decisions or the way that her character is gone. It's sometimes it's just writing. That seems like yeah. a weird choice. <laughs> but, Hospital. <laughs> eh. I'm a fan of fear all the way through. I enjoyed the first portion. I'm not a huge Madison fan. I don't hate her, but she was really self-destructive and that's hard to get behind. It is super hard to make them likable, but I loved the beginning. It was dark and it was gritty and I enjoyed it. And then I liked that there was levity brought to it in season four and after there was love stories and there was humor and, and all of that got brought in and I wasn't mad about a reboot we're getting another one now in the mm -hmm. final season <laughs> which is a little unusual daniel since the very beginning he's he's always been my favorite character he has the best written story out of any character arguably he's gotten the most backstory out of anyone because he is older and we have his story as a father and a husband and also as a child and his military experience and everything in between. Probably the most thoroughly written character that we've seen on the show. He disappeared, but he got to come back because we do that for characters all the time. When Morgan was gone after season one, I was one of those people that was desperate. When is Morgan coming back? I don't care what Dave says. I want to know. If Tobias comes back in this last scene, I'm going to be so freaking happy. <laughs> I don't even care how stupid it would be. Which just made me so I happy. I would love that. When Morales came back, it was for a second, but just the acknowledgement that these people don't just stop existing right, is what right. I really love. So when Daniel left and then got to come back, and then we find out that he still has the pain in his mouth. When he pulls the that, that six plastic hit. out of his face. It's that's right before Jenny dies. Yeah. Right after. Right it's after in that, in that oh, church. it's right after. You're right. Strand, because, um, because June was, Strand was locked up and, yeah, and yeah. June was kicked out of the dam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so rare that we get to see the acknowledgement of something that it was so far back in the storyline. Often we just blow right through that, especially when there's a soft reboot and totally new people are taking over. We don't ever get to see that re reference back to the source material that they were given. So getting to see that and getting to see that that damage was still done was one, a really cool visual effect to see, but was also really impactful. The storyline with Ophelia and almost getting to reunite and then she's passed when he gets there. And there's just all these heartbreaking moments and the way he loses his wife and we lose him twice. He comes back both times. Mm -hmm. It's insane, but it, it makes his story that much better. And I think the poetic justice that we receive in the fact that he was faking dementia but then now is suffering from some sort of issue mm -hmm. with memory. It's heartbreaking, but beautiful at the same time. And I was so happy when we got to see him in the trailer for season eight, because I was genuinely worried that it may be just over for him. One of his lines was the highlight of season seven. I'm thinking about what I'm going to do to them. <laughs> <laughs> the episode where he's with Arno and yes. Lucy. Right? It's Arno, not Arlo. Yeah. See, now I confuse it because Arno, of freaking Arno. freaking better call Saul. That was one of the best episodes of the season. Because <laughs> that was in 7B. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. will argue was that was okay. Because Arlo was a good Arlo. one. Arlo. You got me doing it now. Because mm -hmm. Arno was still looking for Alicia. So my number one. Do I even need to say it? <laughs> June, <laughs> I'll say it together. June, 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 June. <laughs> because she's fucking a badass. Strong smart capable and i love her character arc because we meet her as this broken person who's so broken she won't even use her real name and she's grown into a person who is threatening to throw the second in command off the fucking tower <laughs> in order to keep charlie safe and of course the shooting of jenny one of my favorite moments. it was her best moment honestly her and john's love story is the first episode i watched and it is what brought me into the fandom it doesn't hurt that i love jenna too but i loved june before that i'm really glad she survived this long i was super scared <laughs> she's somebody you aspire to and wants to go out and help people and kind of selfless and wants to do the best thing even if she doesn't always make the best decisions <clears throat> hospital everybody else is number one aj alicia tom says june brian says daniel lolly anybody want to guess who lolly's number one is no madison madison oh okay <laughs> Yeah. Wait, wait a second. <laughs> Car Caranza says June. 
Nick Sanchez Zarco says Strand. Mitchell says Alicia. Finn says Emil. Emil? <laughs> Not Josiah. Not Josiah, just Emil. <laughs> I like Josiah um, better. <laughs> Donnie says June and Jess says John. Lots of Johns and Junes in there. I think this was fun. It wasn't nearly as long and convoluted as the Walking Dead ones that we did. <laughs> <laughs> There's more seasons there. <laughs> yeah. What do you think of our choices? What do you think of everybody else's choices? Leave a comment. Send us an email. Send us a DM. Let us know what you thought. Give us your choices. We have some other Fear the Walking Dead stuff coming. I have Sharon D, Blazy Gardner, so Rachel, Cosmo Mom 09. Bridget, Ain't My First Rodeo on Instagram, and X Prophecy Girl on Twitter. Also, I'm Punky Brewster on YouTube, and it's spelled like this. There you go. B R U I S E T E R. It's P O N K Y. Punky. It's not really Punky. Don't look up Punky. I don't want Punk. I don't want whoever that is getting my views. P U N K Y B R U I S E T R. Yep. Join us for our next one, guys. T W D Family Forever. And if you like what you heard, well, you can just head on over to ratethispodcast.com slash walking dead. Five stars and eggplant is all we need to know that you love us. Tell us what you liked. Tell us what you didn't like. Tell us what your top five favorite characters of Fear the Walking Dead are. But remember to tell us after every episode. It really is important. Everybody, please take the time out to rate us. I can't even tell you. We're big in Russia now, even though we haven't had an episode in a couple weeks. Russia, we're still in the top 100. I thought that was worth mentioning. <laughs> And if you really like what, what you've heard, well, think about following us for free. It's free to follow us here or there. And that's at ko-fi.com slash squawking dead or patreon.com slash squawking dead. When you do, you have the inside track on some of the cool things that we do. Like when we do a giveaway, the one we're doing now, the Fear the Walking Dead final season countdown giveaway, you will get the questions early when you follow us. Again, it's for free. You can follow us for free. Just create an account, follow us on either of those Patreon or Kofi. And you don't have to go any further than that. Should you decide to tip us on Kofi, you'll get 30 days of supportive back content, which means all the unedited episodes and some of the cool things that we have, we develop behind the scenes. And if you join a membership for as little as a dollar a month, you'll have instant access to our Discord, as well as a whole host of other perks, uh, one of which the Whispers and the Survivor's Tears enjoy at the end of every episode. And that is credits at the end of the episode, starting with our Survivor's Tier members. We've got Aliza Jones 71 on Instagram, or at Jones86 on Twitter, at Real Ryan GM on Twitter, and Fanart Lindy, who you can reach at ko-fi.com slash fanartlindy. And of course, our Whispers tier members. We've got Judith.Morton on Instagram, at Tyler Philip Cox, and at J13 Voorhees on Instagram and Twitter, at Sandy.D.Morrison on Facebook, and Aiden Atkin, who you can reach at ko-fi.com slash Aiden Atkin, who, by the way, graduated summa cum laude. Congratulations, Aiden. You graduated and I love you. It's great. Uh, that's the show, everybody. I hope you really, really enjoyed what we had to offer for you. And we have two more episodes, at least, to show you regarding Fear the Walking Dead, one of which I will try to get out by this week. I'll be posting the unedited episode recording of that episode because I'm working on it right now at Patreon and Kofi. And if you want a piece of that episode, the unedited episode, you know what to do. You know when it'll go out. And uh, when you follow us for free, by the way, you'll get to know our recording schedule on Kofi and Patreon. And it's absolutely free to attend our recording so you can lend your input as we go. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Stay tuned for Fear the Walking Dead, which is premiering publicly on AMC on May 14th and pri privately. Yeah, I guess it is privately on AMC Plus on May 11th, which is in just two days. Take care, everybody. We'll see you very soon. Have a good night. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Okay, bye, everybody. We'll see you soon. <laughs>